Hey buddy, it is good to see you again. Welcome back to South Carolina at the Ken's Garage. So thanks for joining us again, Mr. Jura. Uh, you, you brought a kind of nice looking tree here for us to talk about today. What, you, what do you have? Well, first, uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to make a video. The world has been waiting and wondering <laughs> what's <thanks>. gone on. <laughs> but I'm glad to see you're well. Um, yeah, this is a, a pretty simple three-piece Shimpaku group planting. It has a fairly extraordinary history that we're not going to get into at all, except to say... Sorry. Except, another time. Except to say that it's, it's a personally uh, meaningful planting to me. I and, know it is. Yeah. And it's important in our collection, too. All right, so because it's been, uh, in my mind, so important, over the years I've been really conservative about growing it, you know? And, and my idea was to fill it out and kind of keep it as long as I could in a, in this same general look. But you can see it's gotten it's gotten too thick, you know. It's nice to see this all lush it's like nice that. Nice and shaped and pruned. Yeah, and it's, but it's, it's, it's too heavy. Yeah, it's way too heavy. It had a little bout of something at the end of last year where this back tree took on a, a strange coloration and I didn't know what that was caused by. So I took it off a display. You can still see a little bit of it, but it got, you know, very noticeably off color. And I took it off display and put it under a shade cloth and checked it for spider mites and whatnot. Never did find anything on it. And it seems to have recovered. But because of that, it went like a good deal of time last year without getting any kind of attention. And so it's really past uh, the due date for getting tightened up, and that's what I want to do today. What kind of techniques do you think you're going to use to tighten and open that up a little bit? I, that sounds kind of funny, tighten and open. Yeah, but I well, think that's probably what's going to happen. So yeah, both. You're right. You're right. You know where you can see things starting to close up, like the spaces between the masses. That has to be opened up, and at the same time, the overall size of it that needs to be tightened up because it's. It's spreading, you right, know. Right, right. So uh, that's Will why. Will you be pinching? Um, you know where it's convenient. <laughs> we won't even go there. <laughs> we'll just make it shorter, one way or another. No, I mean, starting out, this tree was always pinched because that's how I was taught. So I did it that way. But you know, lately I do it a lot more with shears than with my fingers. But your fingers are still useful for they certain things. Absolutely are. You know? they absolutely are. And it depends what you're pinching and, out. And I think of it as ripping sometimes more than pinching what I do because I'm I'm going underneath the pads and and ripping some of that foliage, pinching whatever you want, however you want to describe it. Um, but but I do. Um, uh, prune with shears where it's where it's on top and more visible but <clears throat> you know if you take out the same part with your fingers that you would take out if you were using scissors what difference does it make well so I think the difference is is you take the scissors back to the brown yeah. rather than in the green if you take it off on the green whether you pinch it or, or pull it off um, it, it's gonna leave a little brown tip <clears throat> yeah I, I still don't you know, I think if it's young enough that you can sever it with your fingers and you're doing this, you're taking away the same part that you would if you were cutting it with scissors. Um, I think one of the other arguments against pinching is the overall pinching where you're removing massive amounts of growing tips. You're removing 80 or 90 percent of the growing tips and that causes the tree to struggle. Yeah. So, well, respecting the growing tips, that's, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate having learned that from the people who came back and said, well, you know, pinching is, is really damaging these plants. Uh, understanding what they meant, I agree with that and have changed habits yeah, since then. Yeah, yeah. So we make adjustments as we go along, we right? We live and learn. You've worked hard once again, Arthur. This is, this is uh, um, looks like a different tree. Scissor work only. 
right? No wire yet. It's just a matter of cleaning out, taking out some chunks, as you can see, right? We got space where we didn't have it before. Yep. You can look through and into the tree. And this is, of course, one of the distinguishing features between a tree and a shrub. You know, when you look at a shrub or even an immature tree, mostly what you see is the foliage. When you look at a mature tree, especially an older tree, you can look in, see the trunk, see the structure, and so forth. It needs a lot of wire now, because in some places where a chunk was taken out, we want to rearrange a branch to kind of ease Fill into in that, that space yeah, so it's not space. so big a gap. Yeah. But as you mentioned, that tree that had the discoloration, you can kind of see that more now. Um, and so I imagine what I cut off was a lot of what regrew after I put it under the shade cloth. Yeah. So we'll have to watch and see on that. What, what can you do otherwise? I mean, I know it doesn't have a, a, a pest. I think we'll repot this later this year, so we'll change the medium and we'll see what happens. Excellent, excellent. Looks great. Thank you for your hard work. We'll do a follow-up at some point, you know, to see how it ends up. Arthur provided that follow-up for us. He uh, finished working on it, wired a few branches, and it looks like he thinned a few more things too, and uh, shared a little video with us after he got it back to the Arboretum. Thank you, Arthur.